Hulk Hogan, the greatest wrestler of all time. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Got space, man, huh? No, actually, I'm a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can't go anywhere without getting a boner. How you doing? I live my life. Woo! The Rock says, Sweet baby Jesus in the office. One, welcome to Wrestle Rock Podcast. We are your host, Benoit Laferriere, a.k.a. Nostrada Ben. And uh, I host uh, this episode with my uh, childhood friend, Jonathan Drapeau. Hey. How are you doing, Joe? Yes, uh, good, good, good yourself. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. So uh, tonight, my friend, we have a special guest with us. He is a uh, former uh, WWE talent and former tag team uh, a uh, champion. He is also a, uh, a four-time form... OVW uh, world champion. Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we introduce you, uh, Mr. Doug Basham. How are you, my friend, today? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on your guys' show. Uh, thank you for accepting uh, our invitation. Uh, this is an honor and privilege. You know that you are very busy with a lot of things, and uh, we go forward with some question right now. Go ahead, my friend. So, uh, first question. Before joining the World Wrestling Entertainment Talents, you began your career in OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling. This promotion included few talents as John Cena, Batista, Brock Lesnar, or Randy Orton. Can you talk about this experience and how you signed with OVW? Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> we started off from the very beginning almost. Um, the individual that um, owned and created Ohio Valley Wrestling was my uncle, Nightmare Danny Davis. Okay. And um, so he's the one who trained me, and I started training way back in 1992. Wow. Long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Years ago. <laughs> long time ago. And then um, as um, I honed my skills in OVW, um, Danny Davis. He started Ohio Valley Wrestling, but before it was called Ohio Valley Wrestling, it was called the Nightmare Danny Davis School of Professional Wrestling. Okay. And then he would run, he trained a few guys um, along with myself. Okay. And he started running shows. And then he had this vision and this dream of creating his own wrestling promotion, which was Ohio Valley Wrestling, Championship Wrestling. So he did that, and while that was uh, growing and being aired on TV, Jim Cornette got involved okay. with uh, the product and brought in the um, developmental uh, contract from the WWE. And with that first wave of talent <clears throat> that the WWE sent to Ohio Valley Wrestling uh, was your John Cena's, Batista's, Randy Orton's. And um, there were other guys that were already there who had had quite a bit of experience that Danny had trained on um, these guys. They, they were called the OBW originals. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was the very first OBW student ever. Wow. that That's really cool, man. And uh, I, um, if I understood... Uh, uh, if I understand that you are uh, the Danny David uh, nephew, right? Yes, yes I am Danny Davis's yes. nephew. Huh? In this uh, era, Mr. David was the owner of uh, OVW. Uh, would you like to listen to you about your uncle, uh, Danny David? Do you think that Dave, Danny Davis is a better wrestling coach, a promoter, or a uh, referee? Oh, man. Um, I think he is a better friend <laughs> and uncle than anything. Uh, <laughs> but um, you, his, his coaching um, uh, and training style is, okay. is stellar. It's, it's, it's no comparison to anybody um, when training. His, be actually, and then after I was trained, I got to be in the ring with him and actually wrestle with him. I mean, we're talking a superstar, a top-notch talent, a top-notch guy in the ring who could, you know, go in there and have a wrestling match with a broomstick. 
I mean, he could make a chair look good if he went in there. So to pick which he was the best at, uh, that that's, uh, I think he would, uh, no matter what he did, in my eyes, I would consider him the best at it, whether it be coaching, wrestling, refereeing, um, producing, <laughs> Yeah, we can Anything. we can compare uh, your uh, your uncle with uh, a person in in uh, Quebec City, Canada. Uh, the name is uh, Ray Rougeau. The guy is uh, first of all uh, the current uh, mayor of uh, Rodden in Montreal, but he also <laughs> wrestled uh, in tag team with uh, his um, brother for the Fabulous Brujo brother, and mm -hmm. he also uh, a commentator for uh, WWF uh, uh, during uh, uh, 17 years. So uh, that that that's look like when you are a multifunction you can share a lot of experience with many others. So that's pretty cool. So uh, uh, Danny Davis, in a, for us, he is a, a very important person in the, this uh, wonderful wrestling world. And you're absolutely correct. When, some, when, when an organization has the opportunity to have someone like Danny Davis or Rougeau Uh, give their experience, whether it be on the microphone, in the ring refing, in yeah. the back agenting, whatever. That That's a big asset. is a It's gold, a gold yes. mine. Yes. Exactly, exactly. So go ahead, my friend. Okay, uh, Mr. Basham, how was the OVW WWE transition? How was the OVW WWE transition? Yes. Well, of course. Yeah. for, uh, for you. Uh, Yeah. I, I, yeah, I've been asked this question before, and um, it's in my experience, what, I spent 10 years in OVW before I got my developmental contract and mm -hmm. before I moved up to the active roster in the WWE. Um, cool. It was WWF, then they switched it over to WWE during that mm -hmm. transition period I was here, so I'll just call it WWE. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like uh, whenever you did, did – Either of you play any type of high school sports by chance? Soccer, baseball, basketball, mm -hmm. uh, anything like that. I compared it to like this. Moving from OVW to WWE was like going, being the starter on your high school basketball team yeah. and then going to college. Yeah, <laughs> it's the, it's the, different. The, that's pretty, it is different. Yes, and then... Uh, Can you compare uh, the university uh, football uh, with uh, the, the, the NFL or that it's not the same thing? Um, do you, when you say football, um, are you talking here in the States, we have American you, football yeah, and it, the rest of the world calls soccer football. No, no, <laughs> so no, no this to... is American football. If you are growing Uh, in uh, university football and uh, will be signed a, a contract with an NFL team. Uh, can we compare uh, this or that it's not the same uh, with WWE? Um, it, I would say it's, it's the same but different. Uh, if, that, if, you got, if you can make any sense out of that. Because whenever you um, are here in the, uh, OVW, you're okay. trying to get to the WWE. So just like whenever you're playing a university football or here in the States, we call it college football, you're trying to get to the NFL, you know, and yeah. sign, sign big money contracts. because that, that's your dream. And that's what you're, you've been training for your whole life. And that's what you love. And you have the passion for <laughs> And the payoff is not the same. If you know, well, what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, uh, but you know, there's, It depends. Whenever you first get signed, um, depending, mostly depending on who you are and what you're bringing to the table, mm -hmm. you've got to earn your big money contracts. And I guess that's kind of the same in the uh, any professional sport when you're going from amateur to professional. Yeah. Um, okay. Nothing is ever given to you in this world. And the same thing goes in, in wrestling. You have to earn it. And uh, the guys that get paid the, the big money contracts in the WWE You know, they have uh, paid their dues and uh, they have earned their spot and they definitely earned their uh, earn their uh, contract, big money contracts. 
All right. So uh, thank you. Uh, ben, have a, a question for another question okay. for you? Uh, after this experience and between 2002 and 2003, you did many tryouts uh, with WWE. You wrestled against uh, Mark Jindrak, Charlie House, Val Venus, Nathan Jones, Shannon Moore, and Billy Kinman. At that time, you were not on the main roster. How can you stay focused even though you know uh, that you are not, not in, in the main, main roster? roster? I imagine sometimes that can create frustration. Well, it's uh, when you're in the developmental system um, and you're honing your skills and you're waiting to get that call to get moved up, um, everybody kind of goes through a... Um, Uh, let's see what's the word I'm looking for. No, they'll give you like a, a try. They'll bring you up yeah. on the main roster and put yeah. you on the road for a few weeks to take a look at you. And and because one or two things, either they have something for you and they want to take a look uh, and see how well you work with their uh, active roster members, or they're wanting to take a look. They have a they, they want to take a look because maybe they have something for you or they want to create something for you. So anytime you got called up to go on the road, which is what we called it, going on the road, um, that was always a, an exciting moment. Um, and if there was any frustration that would come, a, come, a, uh, come about, it would be sitting in the developmental territory for one, two, three years, waiting for that call up, waiting for you know, your time, waiting for that, that big moment. So as far as staying focused, um, That, that, it was pretty easy to stay focused. It's uh, keeping from getting frustrated was the was the main thing yeah. about not getting called up. Okay. And uh, finally, in uh, 2003, uh, you uh, officially signed a contract with the WWE. That's pretty cool. And you mm -hmm. team up with uh, Danny Holy, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Danny Basham. It was your brothers from another mother. <laughs> when did you first <laughs> meet? Uh, when did Uh, when did you first meet uh, Danny? I uh, first met Danny uh, back in back in OVW before the developmental territory okay. even came. Okay. Um, he was a uh, he was a kid just right out right out of high school. He was young, 19, you know, good looking kid, athletic, and I think he was 19. I was uh, I think I was five five or six years older than him. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had been training for a few years when he when he came in to be trained, and then um, he just uh, watching, just just being around him. Before I mentioned there was the OVW originals. There were four of us, so I, I was the first one, the first student. So I was the first original. The second guy that came in is another individual you guys may have heard of, Nick Densmore, who was Eugene. Yeah. Um, the third individual you guys would have heard of this this guy too. Uh, Rob Conway of La Resistance. Yeah, of course. You know and then <laughs> with uh, um, uh, what, Sylva uh, Sylvain Grenier, I think. Yes, Sylvain. Yes, Sylvain. Yep, from Sylvain. Uh, <laughs> good, good guy. Too. Yeah, I like so, Sylvain, a good guy as well. And then also um, Danny, uh, Danny Holly, or the damager, Danny Basham. He was the, the fourth. Okay. And um, so we were called the Four Originals, and we were the the base of OVW, and we were also the base of the the core that helped train all these developmental guys that WWE was sending in. So we got to work. I mean, the, the guys like John Cena, Dave Batista, Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, and the slew of others who came through and went on um, got a core base of their training with me yeah. danny nick densmore and rob conway that's pretty Not, cool because uh, yeah. can you imagine how you you are on the right place with the right person so what an uh, what a wonderful experience oh and, and if you know what I, i'm not saying that i'm the reason that these guys were successful Not at all. They, they are. They're the reason because they yeah. put in the hard work and, and they're, they're all very talented. But I did get to help them hone their skills. <laughs> yeah, and you, you learn a lot of experience with, with this or that. That's pretty cool. Okay, uh, Mr. Basham, you and uh, your uh, partner, uh, Danny, uh, you have been uh, managed by uh, Linda Myers, a.k.a. Shaniqua. What's the matter with her? We think that she is uh, retired. Uh, yes or no? 
Yeah, I think she's retired. And uh, basically, the story behind Linda, uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll give you guys a good story here. This, you guys will like this. The, the reason that Linda got put with me and Danny in the first place was when, when we got moved up. You know, Danny and I, when we were in OVW, we were in a faction called the Revolution. And that was just a, a faction that you, that I was like the leader of. And I had a group of guys that, you know, wanted to help me take over OBW because my uncle Danny, you know, promised me the company and I was bitter and all that. All that was just storyline stuff, mm -hmm. right? So in, in my faction, um, I was called The Machine and I saw this movie, I think it was 8 millimeter with Nicolas Cage and there was, it, it was about underground snuff films or whatever. And there was this character in there who wore black leather pants, uh, a black leather mask and was just like a, was a real, was a killer. And I said, Oh man, that'd be a perfect wrestling character. <laughs> so I went out and got the uh, black leather pants and um, pleather pants and, and leather mask and all that. And I called myself machine. And I brought the idea to Jim Cornette at the time, and he loved it, and then the machine was born. So there's where uh, the black leather pants came from. And then anybody who joined my faction would wear black leather pants also. So when we moved up to the WWE, we continued to wear our black leather pants. And there we got assigned this rider to us, and he had went to a Britney Spears concert. <laughs> and Britney Spears was dressed up like this dominatrix and all of her male dancers had on black leather pants. Okay. So this, this writer had the genius idea because me and Danny wore black leather pants mm -hmm. to put a dominatrix with us. So yeah, that's in came, in came Linda miles. So that's how she got introduced into the, wow. to the Bastion brothers. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> And then, you know, she won, she won tough enough. Um, Linda Miles was, was a very athletic individual. And um, I, I don't really think that... She was, oh, body, she was a bodybuilder. Uh, no, she was, she, was, um, she, was a, she was a basketball player. Oh, okay, okay. And, okay. and she was just genetically gifted. And, you know, she... Man, the, the, the girl was in shape. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. She was... You know, I say this and I mean this in, in a positive light. She was a freak of nature um, because she was just built so well. And I was always so jealous. I'm like, Linda, don't stand so close to me. You're, you're built better than I am. <laughs> but, um, you know, so basically I, she was so competitive that I believe, I don't know this 100%. This is my perception. I believe she saw the tough enough um, competition as a challenge and she wanted to go win because she's so competitive. So she went and did it, um, one, and was like, oh, crap, I guess I got to do this wrestling thing now. So she came in, and, and she really didn't have, like, a lot of uh, guys who, who break in, like myself and Nick and Rob and Dano, had that passion for it. And we, we breathe it, live it, love it, eat it, drink it, wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Um, I think she just kind of saw it as something to do, and she really didn't have that passion and She was she, very dedicated to a professional wrestling world. Well, she she gave it her best. She gave it her best try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She gave it her best try. Yes. And um, but at one point, Vince McMahon said that she just needed a little bit more training, a little more fine tuning. So he they sent her back down to OVW and put me and Danny on the shelf um, until we got repackaged. And when she was down in OVW, I think she just decided it wasn't for her anymore. So she she just uh, hung up her boots. After this, uh, after this, you receive your first uh, title shots against uh, Los Guerreros, Eddie Guerrero, and Chavo Guerrero, and you won your first uh, tag team championship. How do you feel after this wonderful uh, accomplishment? Well, I'll tell you what, everybody has goals in life, yeah. <clears throat> and whenever you can reach and accomplish that goal, it's, it's an amazing feeling. And one of one of my goals. In, in professional, I had, a, I had a couple of goals that I wanted to accomplish in my life in, in professional wrestling. One is I wanted to work for Vince McMahon. I wanted to work for the WWE. Mm -hmm. So I, I made it there and I checked that off. Two, I wanted to be uh, in a WrestleMania. I was in WrestleMania 20, 21, and 22. So I checked that off. And then three, you know, I wanted to wear, wear gold. You know, I wanted to be a champion. It didn't matter if it was 
tag team champion, cruiserweight champion, hardcore champion. It didn't matter at all. I just wanted to wear. I just want to have a say that I was a champion of some sort. So we became tag team champions twice. And the first time was against Los Guerreros, and what an honor! I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe that you know they they handed the titles down to us, and you know we became champions <clears throat> by going over on on uh, Eddie and Chavo. So that that was quite an honor, and probably one of the, the biggest highlights in in my wrestling career period. Wow. Okay. In your answer, you were talking about uh, WrestleMania 20 in 2004 in Madison Square Garden, uh, New York. Uh, can you share us uh, this uh, beautiful moment? I'll tell you what. If if you go back and if you if they if you can watch the the entrances of that uh, four corner tag match when when me and Danny come out of the door they had like doors that swung open and you, you came out and I mean this the Madison Square Gardens was sold out twenty thousand plus people strong. And when I walked out those doors, you could see for a split second, I totally came out of character and I was in awe. I was and if you, if, I mean, if you can get the DVD or whatever, you'll see it. because I go, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and you could just see that moment on my face. And then Danny's like, come on, we're going to work. I'm like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But, um, it, it was like a surreal a surreal moment you know it was it was a dream come true i was i you know i i made it i did it i did it you know if, if I, this was all taken away from me tomorrow i can say i did it so that's uh that's that's how that moment felt to me yes and after this uh wwe experience you worked for tna uh, for the total non-stop uh, action uh, promoting by uh dixie carter have you preferred this promotion or wwe first well i always wanted to work for the wwe that was that was my goal and when i finally got there and then they were finished with me i'm like oh well there, there's more than one wrestling promotion in, in the world mm -hmm. so uh and jim Cornette. Here's a funny story about my release and then my hire, getting hired in the TNA. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> on, I, I was at home. I was at home at my visiting my because I lived in Tampa, Florida, and my parents lived in Louisville, Kentucky area, actually in southern Indiana. Mm -hmm. And my my grandfather had just passed away, so I came home to go to this funeral. And I was in the rental car headed to the funeral home, and I got the phone call from Johnny Laurinaitis. He, you know, I saw it was a Stanford number and I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they're wanting to call me and bring me back on the road because I've been sitting at home for, for a little bit. Um, Johnny calls me up and he goes, Hey Doug, Johnny Laurinaitis, how you doing? I go, Hey Johnny, what's going on? Uh, just, you know, come back home. My grandfather passed away and going to funeral <laughs> and he goes, Oh God, oh, I'm going to have, we're gonna, we, we have to let you go. <laughs> so I was like, that had to have been the worst moment for him. <laughs> and it was probably the, one of the worst moments for me. Because when he told me that, I mean, what timing? <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting uh, future endeavored uh, while I'm home going to my and, grandfather's funeral. Uh, so we can predict uh, the future with uh, with all the family. So I remember a guy's from um, uh, Montreal called uh, Frankie the Mobster. Uh, he uh, he had a tryout uh, for WWE once again and. Uh, during the tryout, he received a message that uh, his brother passed away. <laughs> so he go oh. back to uh, to Montreal uh, once again, and uh, a second time he received another uh, proposition with WWE. So he going there, and the same thing for uh, I believe that an uncle or uh, I think it was uh, his father. His father, oh, yeah, exactly. Man. His father. So we go back. So we understand that the the situation. And if we, uh, if you are comfortable with this, I can uh, uh, Benoit have a, a little bit the same situation because me and my uh, and my partner Benoit uh, wrestled for over uh, 10 years. And uh, uh, one time um, Ben was supposed to uh, to include it in a in a wrestling promotion in a, in Canada. <laughs> And uh, just before he started uh, for, uh, for for the promotion, he, uh, he received a message that uh, his mother passed away. So uh, uh, we understood uh, all the situation. Uh, that's uh, very embarrassing. Uh, that's so uh, 
Uh, it, it was just just a horrible timing. You know what I mean? It's like, but but nobody, you know, nobody knows. Nobody yeah, knew. I, it was, I they they had a he had a job to do and yeah. he did it, and it was just <laughs> at the worst yeah, yeah. time possible. Uh, but so now we have a a very good uh, situation. Uh, on your Facebook page, you announced that in uh, 2003, you will uh, do in a ring ring return for the OVW promotion soon. Uh, why you decide to come back in wrestling industry? That's, uh, uh, that's good question. Really cool. Good question. <laughs> um, well, you see, I, I started out in OVW 30 years ago, right? Yeah. So um, I went and, and helped build OVW, the very first student in OVW, I helped build OVW and made OVW my my base. Went on to have a career in the WWE, and then uh, after my WWE career, had a short run, the ten, tenure in the Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, and then before I finally decided to just kind of you know, I, I don't I don't want to say retire because I never really retired. I just kind of hung my boots up. You know, I traveled the world for a couple of years because that's something that I wanted to do. And then I kind of just hung my boots up while I was on a tour over in England, came home and just, you know, uh, assimilated back into normal society by getting a regular job, um, which was in medical sales. And um, so I moved from Tampa back to the Louisville, Kentucky area where OBW is, uh, you know, stationed. And many years went by and then COVID happened, right? Yeah. Everybody remembers COVID. Yeah. And then, um, I was at a restaurant. One of my buddies owns a restaurant and I had gotten some fan mail from fans that they, they send me fan mail and then pictures and I sign them and send them back to them. And, uh, this, this, uh, military veteran sent me some pictures and sent me this really heartfelt letter saying, you know, thank you for everything. And, and, you know, um, and I signed, signed the uh, pictures and one of the, the owners, my buddy goes, Hey, I took those pictures. Remember? And I go, yeah, I remember you. Yeah. Cause he used to do photos for, um, the WWE and back in the day, OVW had photo shoots and stuff like that. So they could sell pictures and this guy had gotten some of them. So I was like, Oh, cool. Then he was like, you know, I got a bunch of pictures left over. You think maybe Danny Davis or Jim Cornette or maybe Al Snow would want to buy these pictures. Because Al, Al Snow had purchased OVW from my uncle. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. And Al Snow is now the owner of Ohio Valley Wrestling, OVW. Have you a scoop or uh, no? No. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, uh, we don't know. Al Snow, I didn't know he, that he was uh, the, 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 the new owner. owner. Okay. That, that's yeah. Cool. yeah. 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 You guys, so you can look that up on uh, ovwrestling.com uh, website. You can check okay. it out. Okay. The, the Al Snow Wrestling Academy, you know, um, he's in Gladiator Sports Network. It's all part of OVW now. And uh, Al Snow, he is the he's the owner um, and, and running a, a pretty tight ship there. But uh, so uh, Greg is my friend who has these pictures. He goes, you think any of these people would want to buy these pictures? And I go, I don't know. I will go check. So I called my Uncle Danny and asked him. And he said, no, you know what? I bet Al would, you know, why don't you give Al a call? So I did. I called Al, and at that moment, the the state of Kentucky was was shut down, and they couldn't run any shows or have crowds. But Indiana, which is right just right across the bridge from Kentucky, was starting to open up and and uh, allowing small crowds to gather with you know social distancing inside. So I went over to the building where they were filming. And I uh, saw Al and talked to him for, it had been years since I've seen Al, years, years. And went in and, and said hello and was watched the show and, and was backstage. You know, he was producing his show and doing all that stuff. And I'm just sitting there watching guys, right? Now, now granted, I haven't been around wrestling, haven't been in a wrestling arena or, or even watched wrestling for like 12 years, right? 10 years. So I'm sitting there behind Al watching him do his thing. And all of a sudden I start getting that itch. I'm like, Oh, Oh, I'm starting to itch again. This, Oh, I'm getting that wrestling itch. <laughs> and I know Al saw it. He saw me. He, afterwards we talked mm -hmm. and he goes, Hey man, how'd you like the show? What'd you think? I go, man, everybody did good and small talk. And he goes, Hey, you want to come back next week and maybe help me agent one of the matches? 
And of course I jumped on it. And all along what Al was doing was he threw out some bait. I took the bait and he reeled me in. <laughs> <laughs> and so here we are two years later. Um, I'm helping. I'm, I'm Al's right hand man now at OVW. I'm the head trainer for the advanced classes for his, for the OVW school. I help help him in writing the show, producing okay. the show, cool. agenting the show, promoting the show. I'm the road agent for our house shows. So, I'm, uh, I'm if I understand, <laughs> you are the Danny Davis 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I am. I am Danny Davis 2.0. Uh, so there. So now, um, being part of the show uh, right now, OVW is taking part in a uh, project. Okay. And um, which I, I really can't talk about. Um, and if you keep your ears to the wall, or you guys do a little research, you can figure it out on your own, but I, I'm not allowed to talk about it. So um, what we have on this huge project, we have had like three big pay-per-views. Okay. And um, I guess what you would call August 27th, which is next Saturday, wow. we're, we're calling it OVW's the big one which is equivalent to WrestleMania. So it's our WrestleMania wow. and we have a huge card and, uh, Al Snow came to me and said, because of this huge television project that we're, we're doing here, I have an idea of maybe getting in the ring. And would you want to get back in the ring and tag with me against, you know, these two guys for special stipulations. And I said, oh, man, that means I'm going to have to get in the gym and work out and lose weight and <laughs> get in the ring and take, no you know, get, take because, bumps. Uh, because the pandemic is not easy for the body. <laughs> I, I know, right? And I, I'm 50 years old now, you know? So I'm like, oh, wow. man, that's asking a lot. But, you know, I said, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, I've been training hard. I've been in the gym. I've been dieting. I I'm, I'm feel better than I think I've ever felt in 30 years. So next next Saturday on the August 27th um, at the OVW's the big one our pay per view uh, Doug Basham and Al Snow will be uh, yes. teaming yeah. together to face wow. a couple of other individuals and uh, I'm pretty excited about that and if anybody listening any you can you can get this uh, you can watch this pay-per-view um off the fight tv network yes, exactly. you can, you you, can rent it. Yeah. yes we can watch the the event uh, live on uh, fight tv so uh, every listener we invite you to go there uh to support this uh, wonderful promotion because there's a lot of talent like uh cal hero uh, josh yes. ashcraft uh, leila gray Um, Doug Basham. Doug Basham. Hey. <laughs> Al Snow. Al Snow. The list goes on. We have James Storm. James yeah, Storm. Jimmy Cowboy, Maha, James. Mahabali Shira. Yeah. Harry uh, Alexander. Jesse Goddard. Yeah, many uh, team. Uh, many that, talents. Many talents are there. So many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool, I man. Mean, we have we have a very uh, talented um, uh, staff locker room. I mean. Our, our talent talent right now is the best that I've seen in OVW I think since the, the the developmental developmental days I would compare our locker room today with what was in there with the Brock Brock Lesnar Cenas Batistas these guys are in shape they they're good they're talented and it's just a matter of time before they would get picked up by an aew or a WWE now personally, I don't want them to leave. I want to keep them here, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, for them, you know, this is, you know, to chase their dream and, and make that big money contracts. I'm so glad to be here to, to help them and help critique, help coach, help teach them, uh, what it would take to get up to the next level and stay there. So watching them, these guys be successful has been such an, an honor for me to be here and a pleasure to watch these, yes, these kids uh, grow. And uh, I wish you all the best, my friend, uh, with uh, this, uh, this uh, wonderful uh, story. Well, uh, for ending, as uh, usual, my friend, uh, my partner, Benoit, a.k.a. Nostradamus Ben, uh, try to predict your future. So go ahead, right. my friend. First of all, Mr. Basham, thank you for this interview. 
You are welcome. Okay. And uh, I predict you, of course, uh, uh, LT. And uh, probably uh, you will be the, the next uh, OVW champion uh, one more time. Uh, that you is a great a five -time prediction. Time. <laughs> yes, for a five time. <laughs> also, maybe. Five times. I'm thinking I'm liking the sound of this. Maybe also a tag team championship with uh, your friend Al Snow. Uh, it could be true. That could very well happen as well. You're we, doing great. We wish you. We wish you. <laughs> so thank you for uh, for your time. Honestly, uh, you are super generous, a super uh, super gentleman guy. So thank you so much for for accepting uh, our invitation. So uh, talk to you later, my friend, and take care for your project. All right, thank you. All right. Goodbye. Bye, bye, my friend. Bye, guys.